So you're ready to purchase a new marine monitor for your boat or yacht, or maybe several monitors. How do you go about evaluating different models to make sure you end up with the perfect model to meet your needs? I'm Keith with Green Marine Monitors, and that's what this video is all about. So this is the second video in a two-part video series on evaluating marine monitors. In the first video, we walked you through the process of evaluating monitors by viewing their specification sheets. Different manufacturers list things differently. We wanted to make sure you were getting a true apples to apples comparison on the specs. In this video, we're going to assume you've already narrowed down to a few different models that you want to actually go now and take a physical demonstration of, either at a boat show or in a dealer showroom. The very first thing I would recommend is if you're going to a dealer showroom that you call ahead and ask them that if the monitor is in a display case that they would remove it from the case so that you can actually get a hands-on and you'll see why in just a little bit. The very first thing that you want to do when evaluating a marine monitor, and we're going to give you six things to check that maybe you haven't thought of before is to do a simple heat test. Now we want to make sure that the monitor has been on for at least 10 minutes and preferably even longer. And the heat test is just simply this. You place your hand on the front glass of the monitor and if you feel anything other than just a very, very slight warmth, then that should raise a red flag to you. With today's LED high bright technology, there's no reason for a high bright marine monitor to run anything other than just very, very warm to the touch. Remember, heat is the enemy of electronics, and a marine monitor that runs hot is a marine monitor that could have reliability problems. The second thing we're going to evaluate is the mounting of the monitor. This is one of the reasons why I asked to have the monitor removed from a display case. Now there's a couple things we want to consider here. If the monitor is going to be panel mounted into a console, we want to make sure that there's room for the mounting clips to clear the thickness of the console when we're mounting the monitor from the back side. What we want to try to eliminate here is when you have a carpenter on hand or an electronic installer having to customize anything with the install which is only going to end up costing you more money. So as you can see on our Green Marine 19 inch monitor here, we have mounting slots in the side. We actually also have mounting slots in the top. The reason we have them in the top is if you're pairing up monitors very closely together, several monitors, there may not be room for two mounting clips for each of those monitors to fit into that tight space. So you may have to move to a top mount and a bottom mount configuration. So what we're checking here is to make sure that there's enough clearance for the mounting clip. So we're going to take our mounting clip and we're going to make sure that we back the screw all the way out to give us the most clearance and then we're going to set it in the mounting slot. Now we want to check the distance between the backside gasket and the front side of the mounting screw. And we know if our console is any thicker than that then we need to make some modifications before we get the monitor to the boat and ready for install. The third thing we need to evaluate is viewing angle of the panel itself. This is another good reason to have the monitor removed from a display case. Now when I talk about viewing angle, I'm talking about viewing the display from the side, the top, or from the bottom. Most TFT displays are of a TN technology. And I don't want to get too technical here on the workings of the inside of an LCD TFT display. But here's the, what you want to check. Most TN panels have decent viewing from the top and decent viewing from the side, but the picture quality starts to really go away when we're viewing at the 6 o'clock angle. I'm going to demonstrate this by picking up this monitor and I'm going to tip it towards you so that you can see how the color begins to go away when we're viewing at the six o'clock position. From the side of the monitor, there's still pretty good viewing, and from the top as well. Now this may not be very important if it's sitting 
at a normal angle in a console, either in the pilot house or up on the flybridge. But if you're on a workboat type of format where the monitor may be up in an overhead and you're viewing it from the bottom side, it could be very important. So depending on how your monitor is going to be mounted and what angle it's going to be mounted at, it's just one more thing that's easy and simple to double check while you're at the dealership to make sure that the viewing angle is going to suit your needs. The fourth thing that we're going to take a look at is reflections. Now this is a very simple test that we can do, but it's also aided by having the monitor outside of a display case. It always amazes me how many boat pilot houses have a white headliner in them or just a white fiberglass top, white being the most reflective colored surface that we can have. So this test is very simple and the first thing we're going to do is actually turn the monitor off so that we have nothing on the screen. Now if a monitor has a high performance anti-glare or anti-reflective glass, you should be able to take a look at it and see that it kind of has a purplish coating. Now to check reflections, we're going to actually tilt the monitor up and you probably have lights overhead in the uh, dealership or at a boat show and we're actually going to put those lights reflection right into the screen of the monitor. Now we're obviously going to see the light but it should be a very dim or dull looking reflection. If it's a shiny reflection or too bright where you think it would block out a picture on the screen then that would be of some concern. The fifth thing that we want to take a look at are the most commonly used functions on a marine monitor. Those being dimming and switching between the different signal inputs coming into the, the monitor to display on the screen. The first thing we want to take a look at is dimming. And it's nice to either have a dimming knob that's very easy to adjust the brightness of the monitor or plus and minus arrow keys to adjust the dimming. What you want to make sure is that you don't have to go into a menu setting a few selections deep before you can do something as common as dimming the product. The second thing is switching between signal sources. Again, ideally, you want a single button on the front of the monitor where you can simply toggle between all the different signal sources to get them on the display. So again, just check out these basic functions and make sure they're both intuitive and easily accessible. The sixth and final thing that we want to check out when we're evaluating the monitor is, you guessed it, sunglasses. Now this may seem like a strange thing to do as part of the evaluation, but most people know that sunglasses have a polarizing film on them. But what you may not realize is that marine monitors also use a polarizing technology. And if the polarizing film on your sunglasses is perpendicular to the polarizing film on the marine monitor, they're going to cancel each other out and you're not going to be able to see anything on the display screen. So bring along your pair of sunglasses or actually several pairs that you may wear on the boat because different sunglasses will have different polarizing films in different configurations. Check them all out while you're in front of the monitor, either at the boat show or in the dealer showroom, to make sure every pair works correctly with the monitor that you're thinking about purchasing. So there are our six tips that you may not have thought of to help you evaluate a marine monitor. Hopefully you found them helpful and informative. I'm Keith with Green Marine Monitors, and thanks for watching.